No, no, no. You know what we do? It's time to praise Trey Lance. It's time to praise Trey Lance. 888 957. Looking good. 9570. As you're listening to 957 to Gabe, KGMG FM at HG1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Download the Odyssey app and favorite 957 to Gabe for the best and most up to date sports coverage. And do not forget. That you could also watch us every day on our YouTube and Twitch streams. Just log out and search 957 the game. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel while you are there. 888-957-9570. John Lynch, he spoke about Trey Lance yesterday. Said he was proud of him. A lot's been chronicled of him working with Jeff Christensen and and you know, there's all kinds of different gurus and specialists for these guys to go through. I was really proud. Trey took the initiative and I've talked with Trey. I won't get into the details because I'm not exactly sure on how it all happened. But I, I was proud that it was something that he sought out. And then, you know, I think in the past, maybe Trey was working with multiple people. That's like trying to work with multiple golf coaches. Signals can get mixed. And I think he, he decided, all right, I got to find one that I vibe with the best and roll with that. And I think they did some great work. And I think he's throwing the football a lot better. His base is better. Some of his mechanics are better. Those things are showing up on the field. So I'm not just proud of him for his attitude and his leadership, his resiliency. I'm proud for what I'm seeing out there. And I know there's been a lot of talk about the opportunities he's not getting. I'm proud of him for what he's doing with the opportunities he is getting. Wow. So John Lynch, he's got his ears to the street. Oh, he yeah. knows we're talking about reps, 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 reps. Then he was asked whether or not they could keep four quarterbacks on the 53-man roster. Here's what Lynch had to say. I think four on a 53 would be very challenging. Four in the building is certainly possible. And it's one of those things, Tim, I think we just want to throw it all out there, let things unfold, and then we'll figure out the details as we go. Um, we're all product of our experiences, and that experience wasn't real cool last year. Um, seeing when you run out at that position, that's, that's not a good feeling. And so I think we'll be forever impacted with that going forward, and it will probably affect the way we, and we'll be mindful. Um, I can't promise that because there's other things that arise on the roster. You can try to project it as much as possible, but things always happen. Injuries happen. Uh, it's a dynamic situation, but that, that's an area where it's important to us to, to, uh, to be deep. Yes, they need to because they've only had one starter start every single game under their tenure. as Jimmy Garoppolo back in 2019 when they went to the Super Bowl. Yep. So like that's the thing. Like someone's going to get hurt this year and the depth is going to matter because it always happens every year. Now with the extra 17th game, it's even more imperative that you have a good backup. Hell, we saw that in the quarterback doc and we all saw it with Chad Henney, with Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes mm -hmm. was hurt. Chad Henney went on a 98 yard drive. Come on, Jack Morris. You couldn't stop. <laughs> it just drove me. I was rewatching it. The quarterback doc on Netflix. For those that haven't seen, it follows the lives of three quarterbacks yeah. on and off the field. Mahomes. Joe uh, yeah, Mahomes, Kirk Cousins, uh, Kirk Cousins and, Marcus, and Marcus, Marcus Mariota. But they were showing Mahomes in the Kansas City game when he got the high ankle sprain and Arden Key folded him. And then Chad Tenney comes in and 98 yards for the touchdown. I was like, they're done right then and there. But it's imperative to have a good backup. And who's oh it going to be? Like, we keep hearing about this quarterback well, two competition. Is it going to be Trey Lance or Sam Darnold? Or is there a well, possibility, Bonte, well, that those guys can push for QB1? Well, here's what Lynch said about what made them want Sam Darnold. Oh. Into the fold. I want to bring Sam Darnold into the fold. Here, here's John Lynch. A lot of those things go back to when you studied him coming out of college, and and you know we put work in on Sam as we do with all the quarterbacks. Really liked what he brought to the table, and have even seen promise. Although you said you know hasn't been a whole lot of success, we like the film. We like what he puts on tape. We wanted the opportunity to work with him again, a product of our experiences and wanting to be deep there. And Sam was available. Sam was interested in coming here. It was something we could financially fit in. And, you know, all these guys, it's about stacking days. Yesterday, the, the light bulb kind of came on. He had a really good practice, and you could see things kind of slow down. You could see the talent, the big-time thrower that he can be, and that was a good day. And, uh, you know, now if he can continue to stack that, that, that's good for everyone. Well, Trey Lance stacked a good day yesterday. Actually, he stacked two straight days, oh. Trey Lance. And Trey Lance yesterday was best quarterback on the field. Uh, he was going against the twos, but he was very, very sharp. Completed passes to all levels of the field. It was very, very efficient. Now, Brock Purdy threw an interception. He skipped the pass. Oh, boy. Um, can't do that. Second-year quarterbacks can't do He's that. He's not can't allowed to passes. do that. No. It happens in practice. Guys are going to skip passes. But the funny thing is, Michael Silver wrote an article yesterday at the Chronicle. And it really caught a lot of people by surprise. Some of the things that, you know, he mentioned how 
though it might upset the it's not fair crowd, because a lot of us don't think that Trey Lance has been given a fair shot. But it is what it is. That's pro sports. Though it might not, though it might upset the it's not fair crowd, Lance has had opportunities to seize this job. He started two games as a rookie and made some situational substitutions in the early part of that season. Then had an entire offseason training camp and preseason as the unquestioned number one on the depth chart. Some young quarterbacks would be thrilled to get so many chances. Well, a lot of the young quarterbacks get chances right off the rip. Yeah. Trey Lance helped you win a game in week 16 to stay alive for the playoffs after an egregious loss to the Tennessee Titans. And how gross Jimmy Garoppolo was in that football game, I think we all forget. It was nasty. Some young quarterbacks would be thrilled to get so many chances. So oh, many. Well, wow. let's just think about his draft class. Trevor Lawrence has gotten every chance from day one, right? Yes. Zach Wilson, how many chances did he get? Oh, my God. A, a lot. lot more than a Trey Lance. He was hurt a lot, too. Matt Jones started from day number one. Kenny Pickett has gotten more chances than Trey Lance. Our health is a factor there. I'll give health it. Health is but, a factor. But also, like again, we just mentioned Zach Wilson. was hurt a lot. Came right back in. And now he looks like his days are numbered with right. Aaron Rodgers there, obviously. Uh, they may lie and say we love Zach and what he's doing, but if Aaron Rodgers gets hurt, they're donezo this year for the New York Jets. But it is interesting. Yeah, when I saw that 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 quote from Michael Silver in the San Francisco Chronicle, I was like, so many chances. He's really only had two, right? He's gotten hurt, on it and his body just failed him. And I think it's just frustrating when you're a fan watching it. It's just like, I want right. to see why we invested right. all this. And now Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch, and you hear John Lynch praising him, but through their actions, which speak louder than words, are they giving up on him? Yeah. Like, that's that's what kind of what it well, feels like at times. Well, like, Michael Silver also wrote in this article, um, many people close to Shanahan are convinced that he went against his instincts in April 2021 when weeks after making the trade to move up to number three, he chose Lance over Mac Jones. I said that he, yesterday, Bonte. This I, time, Shanahan needs to block out the noise and make an honest evaluation of the situation. See, I take Mac Jones. We were talking about getting I'm, your guy. Why didn't Shanahan get his guy? Caved. Pressure. For, from who? From what? People around him in the building. They're getting scared off of him, and he started listening to him. Scared off of Mac Jones? Well, it's scared. It's clearly. And the building wanted Mac Jones. Court knew a lot of sources I had. They wanted Mac Jones. Maybe they wanted him, so but not at the number three did pick. Tri- let it, what, did, what pressure? I don't. What pressure? Clearly, there's something. Pressure to take Lance? I mean, Mike Silver's in the know. What noise? There was noise. Where's the noise coming from? Now, also, what was very interesting in Mike Silver's article at the Chronicle, and we're giving him a lot of love. Mike Silver's a friend of the program. Um, even though he doesn't come on our show, he only goes on Willard's show. Um, friend of the station. Willard and Dibs, I should say. There you go. I mean, not slight Dibs, because we know we're never hit the end of it. Oh, boy. Um, this is wild. This is wild. Here, here's the quote here. So, that might mean trading Lance this year instead of keeping four quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Though his current value is something the Niners front office surely would find depressing. As he reported last week, Michael Silver says, San Francisco wasn't offered anything better than a fifth-round pick in the spring. It's possible that impressive performances in next week's joint workouts against the Raiders and in the preseason could juice that up a bit, as could a wave of injuries to other teams' quarterbacks. Worst case, the Niners could cut Lance. And yes, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but this scenario is not outside the realm of possibility. Simply put, if after the way last season ended with the Niners out of quarterbacks and shut out the Super Bowl at the final stage once more, Shanahan no longer had the luxury of messing around. Well, I thought that luxury was gone after 2020 when Jimmy Garoppolo couldn't make it through the season. Yeah. I thought that luxury was gone in 2021. When Jimmy Garoppolo got hurt multiple times and Trey Lance had to spell him after getting hurt himself. Thought that luxury was gone last season. I mean, quarterback's been getting hurt here in San Francisco for a long, long time. It's a problem, and that's why I was talking about it yesterday. I it's I know it's so, crazy to say, but if you just know who your quarterback is coming out of this year, it's season look, of uh, success. That's if you a keep, problem. If you keep Thanks, Purdy, Judy. Darnold, and Trey Lance, that's only $16 to $17 million invested into the quarterback room. It's not a lot. It's not a lot at no, all. No. Are we really? Do we really want to see, or do the Niners really want to trade Trey Lance or cut him to make room for Brandon Allen? Because that's what we're talking about here. Or for like Brandon he, Allen? Oh, my God. He's 30 years old. He was a sixth-round quarterback. 
He's a so, journeyman. So let's. What are we doing here? Make it make sense to me before we go to I break. I can't. Make it make sense to me, Spadoni, or somebody out there. 888-957-9570. Make it make sense. So we want to trade by this logic, and I'm not going to question Michael Silver's reporting because he's tapped in, but trading or cutting Trey Lance. So you want to keep three quarterbacks, say hypothetically, they keep Purdy, Darnold, and Brandon Allen. Well, Purdy has a torn UCL. And he's coming back from that. Who knows how he's going to make it through 17 this year? We got a scare yesterday at the end of practice with Clue Farrell hit his arm. Sam Darnold has had an injury history. Yeah, he sees ghosts still. And he sees ghosts. And he gets hurt. And he turns the ball over. Sam Darnold's last game with the Carolina Panthers. We're going to get somebody off from Carolina uh, tomorrow to talk about Sam Darnold a little bit. His last game with the Panthers, he was 5 of 15 for 43 yards against the Saints. But it gets credited what they win because the Panthers won the game. Oh, my God. Did he he really threw have- for 43 yards. Gutsy. Gutsy. And he's had an injury history. So, uh, how bad is Andy we, Do we want to keep that? Co- like, I, it just doesn't. And, and are we going to praise Trey Lance for having a good day? Because as soon as he skips a pass in, in, in practice, or is he. Does it he overthrow somebody in the red zone period? Everybody talks about it. But yesterday he was on fire. Yesterday he was on fire. 